So in this video, we're going to go over and talk a little bit about the PvP in this game. A lot of people I've seen have said when they activate their PvP flag, there is no one in their server doing it. Now, I've just activated it and I can only see one person in this server. So a lot of you, yet again, are going to be saying, how do you get more people? Well, it's simple. All you want to do is make sure you've got your PV PvP flag active, so on, and then you want to do the simple server swap. If you do it while the flag is off, you will get put into a normal server yet again where there won't be a lot of people. But if you have it on and then you go and simply back out and come back in, it should put you in a server full of a load of other people that are wanting to do PvP. So what we'll see here is we'll do that. And I'm actually going to try out a new build. I don't know if this build is any good, um, but I was just testing it out. It might be completely rubbish, but at least we get to see it here in the picture. I'm just going to log straight back in and uh, hopefully it puts us straight into a new server. Because I did log straight back in, it might throw us back into the same server. Uh, we know the person that was in there with PvP on had M, but because we've obviously activated PvP, it should just actually prioritize who and where we are going to. So live and directly, you are seeing us doing this. What is your thoughts as well? Let me know in the comments down below. What are your thoughts on the PvP in this game? Are you enjoying it? Um, what would you think could be done to improve it? Now, if I go ahead and we can see here, I go and see, I can still got the PvP flag on. If I zoom out on the map, now the server is extremely populated with people who wish to do PvP. So the best place to do PvP, yet again, I keep saying PvP, how many times have I said in this video, I don't know, is to go to St. Anne on Telok. The reason for that is so if you do want to back out of the fight, you can simply just go into dock and uh, do so. So let's set sail here and let's test out this build and see if this build's any good. And if we can see it's actually any good, then I will show you it. Otherwise, I'm going to pass on it and I'll do a new PvP build video. As you can see, I am using the snow and I'm using the Ouroboros. Now, I'm uh, tied between using the Ouroboros and the Black Prince. I'm guessing it's situational. Um, the Ouroboros could be good because depending on if other people are using... Um, if they're using anything with severe damage. Now, I've got on the size of the Karens. So, I am going to be presuming other people have got it as well now i've got that martin in front of me he's got pvp activated so i'm going to start going ahead and firing my long nines at the sails of martin trying to start this fight to see what we can do now is he in the snow i believe he is in the snow and he's fired a mortar at me i've just got out of the way of that mortar and my mortar did hit but it's not going to cause any severe damage but has put quite a lot of flood in on him, and I can start peppering them sails. Bracing, because that's what this build's about. Now, my bracing button is a little bit broken, but I don't know if he's going to be able to outheal my severe damage. Oh, there's it's a pirate ship as well there. So, yeah, I'm definitely out severe damaging him. And then we're hitting the sails. And yet again, we can see that this is doing quite a lot. Probably going to go into St. Anne Dock. So we don't have to worry about the fight. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, I just attacked him as he went into the safe zone. And because he'd done that, St. Anne attacked me. That is a really bad spot to shoot. If you can see they're trying to get into St. Anne, do not attack them because that will go ahead and happen. What I'll do is I'll go out and fight a little bit more and then I'll show you this build if it's any good. Um, let's respawn back at dock so we can fully repair our ship and get rid of our sphere. I know that the Ouroboros is going to do it um, and that is great. And guys, as you can see at the top of my screen, I have got the waves of change. If you're wondering what the hell that is, well, if we look here, the waves of change. The bigger the enemy, the greater the reward. Every player automatically participates by playing the game to collect points. Defeat the pest for the biggest reward. So anything to do with the pestilence fleet, whether it's a, uh, the headhunters, the skirmishers, uh, the the other, obviously the headhunters and the pest himself, you gain points. At the end of the period, Ubisoft or Ubisoft will give out the equivalent amount in euros raised by players to Oceana, up to 300,000 euros. So everything you do killing the pestilence fleet, fleet 
uh, goes towards that goal so you can help clean the sea for free. Uh, there is a link down in the description if you want to uh, go and donate to, to the, the sea organization or Oceana. Um, and also, as long as you're on during this period, you will go ahead and get yourself the Pioneer set, which has got the ship vanities, the hull colors, the sail colors, the ship patterns, uh, and the nameplates and the emblem. And yeah, just, and as long as you're on during the 18th of March, the 31st, you will be obviously automatically entered to get that. Um, so with that being said, that's obviously what that is. Let's set sail once more and just look at this build once more with hopefully not getting into a fight with St. Anne because that was never going to work out. Um, let's go and get my bits and bobs. I wonder what a, a Sandbook PvP build would do to this, actually, because obviously they deal so much damage. I, my brace button is not quite working. It does work, but my bumper's a little bit shocked. Let me get my food and everything. Let me go and put my food buff on. I've got to take that damage from Zombie Beast. There we go. We consume some food. Brace that damage. Start pummeling away. Now this is a 2v1 scenario, so it's not good. But at least we could test this out. And there is another snow there. You can see the snow can literally just take so much damage. And it, we also get healed up at the same time. So it's a win-win. We could just keep popping these level 1s. Don't know how many people I'm actually going against here. So I really need to some flooding damage on here. I've got the rigging station, so when I'm at low health, I'll get a lot of healing back. Keep my food up to full. Let's try and get some flooding damage onto them. Okay, we are taking some damage. Yeah, again, there is multiple, so what do we expect? peppered away but we are surviving I just need to get the flooding on them so I can get the severe damage off oh something hit me with a lot of fire then God, there is a lot of damage incoming. Wow. So, 3v1, it's definitely not winning. Um, let me know in the comments down below what you think of the build. Uh, let me know what build you want. I'm going to show you the build quickly. And then I'll go and fight someone on a 1v1 to try and get a better look at this build. Because a 3v1... Um, I was basically just a sitting duck. I couldn't really do much. Oh, it looks like they're shooting another ship. It looks like the ship that was there was attacking me with them. Um, so I under quite understand that. I'm not too sure what was going on there. 
why all three of them were ganging up on me. Hmm. Is there other people in the open water? There is someone over there. I might actually go and see if I can get in a fight with that person and avoid all the others. No, they've turned their ships back around and they are coming my way. No, they're both sailing in this direction now. And that person is actually going the other way now. So these two are definitely fighting together. Now, I want to fight these two actually on my own rather than the third person. Because I think this can might be able to do a 2v1. But I'm not too sure if it can do um, a 3v1. I think the 3v1 was a little bit overkill. Making it slightly a bit harder than it should have been. He managed to dodge that. It, oh, I actually hit him. But he's got no long lines as well, so this this is a pretty funny method here. Now that snow can't do anything either. Evo, is that snow got long lines? I wonder if they're going to keep chasing. Seems I could literally just keep using repair kit ones here. Now I didn't actually get the sail damage off completely then. Okay, he managed to dodge it. That's healed up. Oh. So I can get a real big hit on here soon. We're almost fully healed back. Of severe damage is what I mean by that. Right, let's go put some severe damage on this ship. Oh, it braced it. Let's keep using that. If I can get some, like I said, flooding damage off, then we can cause quite a little bit of trouble for this snow, because he will have to dock. Keep that up so I can get another heal off. Just wait for the snow to use his damage. Okay, the snow's stopped tacking. Is the snow disconnected? That'd be funny. I think he's disconnected. So we kill him. Why not? I'll take it. And now we go after Zombie Beast in a 1v1. And this should win the 1v1. see it not winning the 1v1.
Oh, he's back. He must have disconnected for a moment. Don't want to hit his sails with my normal cannons. He's lagging all over the place, this dude. Right, let's get this. Let's get this ship out of the picture. Let's try and get our flooding off. that ship down. Now we just got to deal with this one. So let's get the flooding down and then we can deal with this one without any issues. Oh, we're getting shot by another person. Start getting this flooding off on him. Let's consume that food. I'm hunting him. Should be able to get a good bit of flooding off in a second. Oh. Do you reckon these two are working together? I mean, it is working good. Could it be better? Yes. Okay, now we got three on us again. So now this this is it. This is where we can't do anything. go and we did get beat so let's go back to dock let's show you this build so this build can take on 2v1 but it can definitely not take on 3v1 um, I've shown you how to activate PvP um, I'm probably sure by now you guys know that you can't fast travel in cutthroat and there's no speed debuff so for cutthroat if you don't get the map first as a slower ship you're probably not gonna win it so if uh, you're doing a cutthroat try and use a brig let's go ahead and repair 
And let's quickly just turn it off because we're going to go and get our bits. So let's go and manage ship. So um, initially, so you know what ship we're in, we're in the snow. Uh, the snow, the reason is because it's got the tenacity, recovers brace strength by 4% per second while bracing, increases brace strength by 50% and brace strength recovery by 150%. Now, if I go over to manage ship, the weapons that I've got on has got the long nines on the front and the rear. And on the sides, I've got the Karens. Uh, and then for the auxiliary, I've got the Leopold free. Uh, the reason I use the Leopold free is because I'm trying to get that flooding off and obviously it helps towards that because the quicker I can get flooding off, the quicker I can get severe damage onto someone, the quicker I can get them out of the fight. Now I am using the Ouroboros, it's completely up to you whether you want to use the Ouroboros or if you want to use the Black Prince. Now the Ouroboros is probably better for this because it's got the flooding defense and um, especially going against a brig, they're going to try and flood you quite a lot so that's not a bad shout to have. And then you've got the furniture, so the furniture I thought, why not mix it up? Now, why does everyone like the bark so much? The reason people like the bark so much is because it's got that passive heal. But if we look at the passive heal, it's got 0.5%. And then if you added the rigging station, it's got 1.5%. But the overall health of the bark, with the health added onto it, is 37,800. And obviously the brace strength is uh, 7560. And that, if you add on 1.5%, so 1.5% of that is going to add up to a total of 567 repair per second. But the snow has got quite a lot more. If we look at the snow, oh, I'm, I, I'm missing out on a bit of furniture, which I should have on. So I'm actually missing out. I could have actually got even more healing than I was getting. So don't do this build entirely. Let me go and change that lead kettle. And let me go and put an extra 5% hull health on. Because we're trying to get as much health back as possible. So we want to put the double plank to hull on that. Um, if we... Yeah, so basically... If we now look at this ship, which is the snow... It's got 52,500 and its brace strength is 26,250. But if you do 1%, I know the bark's got 1.5%, but 1% of healing back every second on the snow is 525. So not only is it basically giving you the exact same healing back as the bark, it's got a lot more overall health and it's got a lot more brace strength with the Tenacity perk, which obviously recovers brace strength by 4% per every second. So this actually heals a lot more than the Bark does, with the Bark being on its own. So I was using the Bark for PvP, but I would strongly recommend using the Snow over the Bark if you're going for the, the health back per second. So let's go over the Furniture. So Furniture, yet again, is the Rigging Station recovers 1% whole health per second when the whole health is less than 20%. Um, and the color burn works. One increases elemental damage multiplier of the color burn by 19%. So we get extra more elemental damage, especially when we've got that flood on. We cause a lot more severe damage. Um, and then I've got the long gun works. Increase elemental damage multiplier of long guns by 19%. So we can get that tearing effect off more often. Uh, that way we can um, get get the uh, 7,000 propped off of this, the, the long nines more often. And then obviously furniture slot 4 is a double planked hull. I did have increased uh, flooding by 10%. Uh, 10% but I would definitely go for the max whole health because that's how we're working off with the rigging station for the 1% back. So, yes, yeah, so the snow every 1% back when it's got the additional is 525 health per second. Um, and the bark is 567 health back per second. But the bark does not have nowhere near as much brace. And it doesn't obviously have no nowhere near as much health. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. I hope you like this PvP build and everything is explained on PvP. Um, without further ado, like, follow, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.